Okay, Alexander, let's talk about uh, Afghanistan, Taliban takeover, and the intel community. And, uh, you know, there's, I read an article that there's actually quite um, a civil war going on in the, uh, in the government, the United States government. The intel is uh, furious with, uh, with the White House. At least this is the perception that they're trying to put out to the media. The intel is upset with the White House saying that, you know, we warned you guys. We told you about all of this. You know, we see from the administration kind of the narrative that, you know, well, you know, we had no idea that uh, the Taliban were going to just, you know, roll over the Afghan army and take over the country in a matter of, uh, of days. And, and you're starting to see everyone trying to shift the blame to, from, from the one department, one institution to the other. The intel community is uh, definitely in a self-preservation mode, but you just can't deny the fact that for the past 20 plus years, all you've been getting from them, not only on Afghanistan, but a variety of things, but we're talking about Afghanistan here. What you've been getting for the past 20 years has just been complete lies as to the real situation of Afghanistan. Complete freaking lies. Um, we've heard over the 20 years that everything is going great. The army's Absolutely. getting trained, everything's fine. It was lies, all lies. It was all lies. It was all completely untrue. And, of course, the U.S. has the most, the, the biggest most powerful, most sophisticated intelligence community in the world. So one has to make one of, draw one of either two conclusions. Either they were completely incompetent and they were getting all this vast amount of information out of Afghanistan. And Glenn Greenwald says that the Snowden documents that he saw, this is a part of the Snowden documents he never released, but the Snowden documents showed that the US was actually monitoring every single cell phone in Afghanistan. So that gives you some idea of the kind of data collection they had in Afghanistan. So either they were totally incompetent about what was going on there and, you know, they, they, they were getting all this information and they didn't understand that the whole situation, the whole military system, the government, everything was totally hollow or they were lying and they were lying to everybody. They were lying to the White House, obviously, at various times, but not primarily the White House. The people they were primarily lying to was Congress because they would all troop out and tell Congress all is going well. The uh, government is getting stronger. The military is getting stronger. We've got the thing under control. Progress is being made. I mean, we know the, right up throughout all these 20 years of failure, we've been hearing about progress all the time. It's almost always about, you know, victory is in sight, <laughs> even as in reality, it was receding ever further into the distance. But that was the message they were giving. So either, either, either they were utterly incompetent, or they were straightforwardly lying. Because there's no, there's no other way you can explain or justify this. And bear, bear in mind, the right up to the day before um, um, Kabul fell, we were getting reports that it would hold out for 90 days. <laughs> I mean, you know, things that even, even up to that moment, they were spinning an optimistic story that had no basis in reality. Now, I, I am going to be straightforward about this. I think the intelligence community, most of the time, nearly all the time, in fact, all of the time, were lying. I mean, I don't believe they could have been that ignorant of the true situation in Afghanistan. But as it often happens, when people have lied an awful lot, it's very difficult to go back on the lies. And it's very difficult to go back in the last few weeks and say, well, actually, everything that we've been telling you for the last 20 years is absolute BS and there's no reality. And this government is about to collapse because it's utterly corrupt. And the 300,000 men that are in that army don't really exist. It's probably only a fraction of that size because the officers are pocketing the salaries of the men who aren't really enlisted. Uh, they, don't, they, didn't, they couldn't bring themselves to admit to that. So they continued to spin these fairy tales about 
the fact that this was a strong army and a strong government that was going to keep fighting for much longer. Now, what that tells me, by the way, is that these are not intelligence agencies in any real sense any longer. They do collect intelligence. They do process intelligence. But they are ideological entities whose function nowadays is to validate ideological ideologically charged policies. And they did that in Afghanistan by providing a narrative which fundamentally was not true. They did that in the United States itself, where they provided data misinformation that undermined a president, Donald Trump, who was against that narrative, which they are the the intelligence agencies are committed to promoting. And it seems to me that they do this all the time. So can I just say one final point? When the intelligence agencies come along and tell you that, well, there's WMD in Iraq or WMD in Syria or attacks of a certain type happening in Syria or... Uh, you know, events happen in a place like Salisbury or whatever. And they come along and they tell you with absolute definite certainty that this is what happened. You have no reason to assume that is true because what they were telling you about over, over a period of 20 years about the war that was being fought in Afghanistan was spectacularly and completely untrue. Yeah, just four weeks ago, it's, it's going to be a famous video. It is a famous video. Just four weeks ago, Biden was saying there's no way, no way that uh, the the military, the Afghan military is going to get overrun by 70,000 Taliban fighters. No way. He said this is not going to be a Saigon moment. He said that Absolutely. this is not going to be a Vietnam moment. No way. I mean, he's getting these talking points from somewhere. Someone's advising him as to what's going on. I imagine it's the it's the military and the intelligence agencies. And, well, you know, you bring a good he, point to he, he yeah, actually he actually defended the intelligence agencies during all this. He was they were saying to somebody, a, me, a me, person in the media said to him, you know, the intelligence agencies are predicting that this government will fall. And he said, no, 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 that is not true. That's not what the intelligence agencies are saying. So either he was lying at that time about what the intelligence agencies were telling him, or he was confirming that the intelligence agencies were giving him all these talking points that you just mentioned. Yeah, and so we know from Greenwald that uh, the intelligence agencies, they gather everything. It's noted, right? And Assange. We know they gather everything. Absolutely. They have everything, all the texts, all the messages of everybody all over the world. So it's like you said, either A... They have all the information, but they're just not uh, not intelligent enough, not capable enough to uh, process the information and come out with um, a, an accurate assessment of various geopolitical uh, situations. That could be number one. It's just data that they, they get the data and they have the data, but they're just not smart enough to read the situation. OK, and they, and they always come up with the wrong assessment, always. Or they're purposefully misleading every single president, not only every single president, every single American, every single American citizen. They're purposefully misleading them, whether it's Iraq WMDs, whether it's chemical weapons in Syria, whether it's uh, Trump and Russia, whether it's January 6th, whatever it is, they're purposefully misleading people, which to me sounds more plausible. And I would then come to the conclusion that the intelligence agency, the intelligence agencies are doing this on purpose because they don't want to relinquish the power they have. You know, they don't want to be transparent and open when advising the president or members of Congress or being transparent with the American people, because if they were to do that, they would lose their power. That, that is exactly correct. And I mean, I, I mean, I'm be straightforward. I mean, I give the two possibilities. But I don't believe the intelligence agencies are that incompetent. I mean, I, there, there comes a point where you have to say to yourself, people who have all of this information, I mean, it's not conceivable 
that they were in total denial about all the information that was coming. I mean, they must, at some level, have known that what they were providing to the American people, to Congress, was absolute BS when it came to Afghanistan, and I am sure about many other things. And that does tell you a great deal about how intelligence, how the intelligence uh, um, community now functions, because its job, as I said, is no longer, or at least it, in its own perception, it is no longer to keep the president of the United States and the United States government informed of what the true situation is so that the president and his advisers can make properly informed decisions about what needs to be done in the interests and for the protection of the United States. It is instead to provide information, which more often than not is misinformation, in order to promote particular ideological projects. And that, it seems to me, is now clear, because that is the only way, the only conceivable way, that you can explain this intelligence disaster. And note how they are hiding again. They're coming along and saying, well, it wasn't us. We were telling the truth all along. We're engaging in all these recriminations. They're pointing fingers. Pointing fingers at whom, precisely? I mean, who, who are they pointing fingers at? If all of that information that was being poured out to the public over those 20 years about that enormous progress which was being made was untrue, why didn't the intelligence services say so? Why didn't they come out and say, our information is being distorted and misrepresented? They never yeah. did. Yeah, all, all they're doing is it seems that they're working with the mainstream media to produce fictitious and fantasy uh, narratives. What what happened? What was it uh, a year ago? What happened to uh, the Russians are paying uh, Taliban uh, fighters to uh, to take out American soldiers, according to two anonymous sources that have spoken to CNN or The Washington Post. They're creating these types of, of fictions, but they're not reporting real straight facts as to what's really going on in Afghanistan and look at where we are. Absolutely. I mean, what you say is spot on true. So we get all these anonymous, you know, uh, serving and retired officials who come along and talk to the Washington Post and the New York Times and spin, you know, ludicrous stories about how Donald Trump is in you know, collusion with the Russians or how the Russians are paying the Taliban to kill American soldiers. Completely phony stories. Well, where over the last couple of weeks when the uh, Taliban were closing in on the Afghan government and Joe Biden and the administration was coming out and saying, well, all is well, things are going, things are fully under control, you know, progress is being made and all of those things. Where, during those events, were the anonymous sources turning up to the Washington Post and the New York Times and was, and was saying to the New York Times and the Washington Post and the American people, our intelligence, the evidence we're providing, the information we are providing to the President of the United States is being distorted and misrepresented. That was never said. Never once was that said. And no one, neither officially nor unofficially, did the intelligence services come along and say that uh, um, the evidence that the information that the president, Joe Biden, was giving was wrong. So you're absolutely right. They plant false stories, fictions in the media in order to undermine the president, Donald Trump, and they allow false stories to support a narrative in a place like Afghanistan when it suits them. They don't report the truth. They report myths. So let's go back to four weeks ago, what's going to be this infamous, famous uh, press conference, this statement from Joe Biden, where he does talk about the fact that uh, Afghanistan will not be run over by the Taliban. Uh, Kabul will not fall and we will not have a Saigon moment in Afghanistan. It is impossible. He said it will never happen. I imagine as president of the United States, you're getting briefed on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. 
by uh, military officials, by intel officials. Um, you're getting briefed from people like Christopher Ray. You're getting briefed from once upon a time from people like, let's not forget, Comey's of the world and the Clappers of the world and the Brennans of the world, right? These were these intel officials. You're getting briefed by all these people and the military officials as well, the Austins of the world, uh, the Mark, uh, the Millies of the world. They told Biden and Biden's team, Biden's script writers, that this is what's going on. I mean, the script writers didn't make this up on their own. They were in the briefing rooms and they were told this is a situation. So these are the answers that you're going to prepare for the president. This is what the president's going to say. These are his talking points because we have the intel and we're telling you this is how it is. What's happening here? Obviously, that's not how it was. Obviously, that's not how it is. Obviously, there are people lying. Obviously, there are people uh, feeding false information. Obviously, it's clear as day. Who's, who's feeding the false information? Who's lying? Are they all in it together? Because Biden is just going there and just reading a script. He's getting played. I, and I'm not defending Biden. <laughs> you know, He has no idea what's going on around him. But there's no doubt that he's getting played. Well, the last time anybody seriously proposed a reorganization and a reform of the intelligence community because that person decided that they were unfit for purpose was Michael Flynn when he was appointed by Donald Trump to be his national security advisor. Flynn, who, remember, was an intelligence um, um, uh, officer himself. He'd been head of the def defense intelligence agency had concluded that the intelligence community was unfit for purpose, that it wasn't doing its job properly, and he wanted to carry out a radical reform and reorganization of it. So what did they do? They engineered his downfall. Uh, they leaked information to the Washington Post. They used David Ignatius. They made up a whole fairy tale about what Flynn was supposed to have said to the uh, Russian ambassador. And they orchestrated in meetings in the White House a um, criminal investigation of Michael Flynn on a flimsy and made-up crime which had never been prosecuted um, and without telling Flynn that he was actually under investigation. They interviewed him without even telling him that he was under investigation. The one thing these guys are very good at is protecting themselves. Then they are able to protect themselves because they have the support of large sections of the media and, of course, uh, uh, many, many people in Congress. And I'm afraid it's a problem that the United States, the people of the United States, must address for the future of the Republic, because clearly a lot of the people who are working in these intelligence agencies are now, to say it in an understated way, a law unto themselves. Because a radical reform of the intelligence agencies is absolutely essential. And you're absolutely right. The president does get a daily brief every morning, apparently, the intelligence community sends its people round and they brief the president on the most important things that are supposedly happening in the world. And that is obviously a key event in the president's day, which enables him to make the decision. The one president who was utterly sceptical about it, again, was Donald Trump. And I can remember that there was enormous anger and horror when he started to skip the daily brief and basically treated it all as a fiction, which, as it turns out, is what it actually is. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible that even today, with everything that happened in Afghanistan, you could go back to the way they were uh, handling Flynn and Trump. And, you know, it, it makes sense why, why the events in Afghanistan have turned out the way they have. When you go back and you look at how the intelligence community and the military and all these people uh, treated the Trump uh, presidency and treated Mac Michael Flynn. And, and you get an understanding as to how we got to where we are. Absolutely. That's in, I, it, it, it gives you a clear picture. I mean, there are, there are things that are going on in the intelligence community. I don't want to suggest 
everybody who works for the intelligence community is, you know, like this. But the dominant faction that controls these, this, uh, the intelligence community today is deeply ideological and uh, basically out of control. And they tell nonsense about Afghanistan for 20 years. And when they get a president who doesn't want to listen to them because he doesn't believe them on key things, because he's got good reason to. I mean, they, they, they told him, remember, they told him that he'd been in a room with, uh, well, in a room in a hotel in Moscow and doing all sorts of things there, which he would have known <laughs> was untrue. I mean, he was there, after all. I mean, he, he was in that room in Moscow, so he would have known what actually happened when he was in that room. So, I mean, he had, he had good reason not to believe what they were telling him. But, you know, he, he did disregard what they said to him. Do you remember how there was all those all those comments that we were hearing throughout the Trump years about how the president, uh, uh, you know, prefers to believe what others are telling him other, instead of what the, his intelligence agencies are telling him, that the president, in other words, is obliged in some ways, in some way, to believe what the intelligence agencies are telling him, making him, in effect, a cipher. But anyway, that's the reality. These people are out of control. They, they, uh, they tell the president, Congress, the American people, uh, what they need to say in order to get certain policies pursued. And, of course, they act very, very, very ruthlessly when somebody comes along, be it Michael Flynn or Donald Trump or whoever, and or, or, or and says, well, you know, I, I, I don't believe all this nonsense. It doesn't make any kind of sense. This is the actual policy which we are going to follow. Remember Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, who, you know, got incredibly angry when Donald Trump had the audacity to go against the will of the interagency? <laughs> You know, a country can't survive this. Uh, I think it's pretty basic uh, common sense um, that if a country doesn't have a hold of its military or its intelligence community, it doesn't, it, it can't govern, it, it, can't, it can't make it. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Of course not. I mean, a, a country which has lost control of its intelligence agencies and of its military and of its police forces is no longer a constitutional state. It's, it's something completely different. And if it's a country like the United States, now I always say to people, the United States is a nation built around its constitution. It has never had any other system of government other than the one which this constitution gave it. If you take that away, then what do you have left in the United States? Something which is only held together, it seems to me, by habit and force. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll uh, leave it there, guys. Go to the Duran.locals.com. Go to the Duran.locals.com. Join us there. You'll get all kinds of great information. And wow, our community members just sharing all kinds of great articles on there as well. So just a ton of information on, uh, on that community. Also go to the Duran shop. Pick up some merch. 10% off when you use the code Real News. I've got my Duran Magic Mug. You've got... Australia. Australia, I see there. I've got Greece. So pick up a magic mug or a T-shirt, 10% off. Use the code Real News, And also check us out on the great uh, media platforms, new media platforms, Odyssey, BitChute, Rumble, and Super U. You'll find those links down below. Take care. <laughs>